Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And in today's episode, the topic is, was hiring a new coach one of the best moves the Clippers made? So that's the topic I want to get into today's video. But before we get into that, I want you guys to please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Also, be on the lookout for our Dreamers Pro premium community and be on the lookout for DreamersPro.com, which is on its way. So, I got a lot that I want to get into today, but I was just thinking about the coaching decision that the Clippers decided to make, and I was trying to understand what are some of the what are some of the key reasons that this team is performing uh, better this year, and uh, one of them was coaching. So I had to go and look at um, uh, the coaching decision that they decided to make. So we all know that the Clippers had a lot of issues last season, right? We knew that. Um, one of them was that the team didn't play enough games together. That was a byproduct of players coming into the season unhealthy. Like uh, Paul George, who was injured, and I think he missed the first 11 games or so of the season due to some surgery that he had in the offseason. So that was one reason. I also was unaware of the fact that Kawhi Leonard actually had some work done uh, in the offseason on his body. So um, that was a part of that played a role as well. Then throughout the regular season, Patrick Beverly was dealing with some knickknack injuries and it was causing him to miss some games. So he was in and out of the lineup. And then at the latter point in the, in the season, uh, um, uh, Paul George is having some issues that were kind of uh, disturbing him. And then with the issue with the, with the thing of Kawhi Leonard not playing as many games as he possibly could have, all of these were some of the issues that were kind of contributing to the team not having the proper chemistry and guys not knowing, uh, knowing each other enough and also not getting enough reps because I think at All-Star Weekend, Shaq asked Kawhi, he said, listen, how many times have you guys actually uh, practice together and he said no more than a handful like mo i think no more than 10 or 15 times and the guys on the you know the guys on the on the show were just like astonished like what you guys have only you guys have been practiced up to maybe 20 you know 30 times this season and you guys were still the number two seed in the league like so the clippers were winning games just purely off of talent and later on in the season when they lost Marcus Moore Sr. said that. He was like, you know, listen, we were just out there winning games just off of sheer talent, right? So that was one issue. Another issue was not enough support from their teammates. If you watch, if you go back and watch some of the Clippers games last season, when guys were playing well or doing things on the court well, teammates weren't even cheering them on, including Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard looked like he was just... Like he was just same old him, same old business as usual. And guys would go up there for a dunk or hit a shot. You'll see some teammates cheering guys on. Others wouldn't, including Kawhi Leonard. He's my favorite player, but I got to be honest. He just seemed like he was dejected or he just seemed like he couldn't be bothered a lot of the times. And some people said that was his personality. But it turns out that you need to be a little bit more involved and you need to show a little bit more um, excitement when your teammates do well. And it turns out that that thing actually goes a long way. A person that does that perfectly is LeBron James. LeBron James celebrates his team's teammate success. So when he gets on them, I think guys can deal with it a little bit better. But when you don't celebrate my success, but then you want to point out a time when I do when I do things wrong, then you're going to have problems. That could have probably be one. That could also have been one of the issues that they had there that just came to mind uh, my mind right now. Another issue that the team had. And a lot of it has to do with coaching because coaches can change that, right? Sort of like a parent or a bigger brother or older sibling looking at his, their younger siblings fight. You can say, hey, listen, man, get it together. What's your what's your issue? Why are you guys always, you know, why are you guys, why aren't you supportive, right? As a bigger brother, for example, you're supposed to be the example. You're supposed to be the one that brings people together. You're not the one that's supposed to see your younger siblings fighting and then you're just there, just allowing things to, to go awry. Or if you're in a family. Right. If you're a senior member in the family, maybe you're one of the you know, elder people. And if you're the one that's supposed to bring people together, if you see family members quarreling, you're not just supposed to throw up your hands and say, well, it's not my business. It has nothing to do with me. No, no, no. You take the you take the responsibility to make sure people are getting along. That's your responsibility as the elder person in that family. So something should have been done, especially from the coaching standpoint. So that was one issue. Another issue was not making enough adjustments and constantly playing Tyron, uh, playing Lou Williams in that Denver Nuggets series. If you go back to that series, first of all, Lou Williams was off. He was off for the playoffs, right? Because he his his point uh, points per game dipped tremendously in the regular season. He was averaging about 18 in the playoffs. If you go back and look at his numbers, if you hunt them, hunt them down, you see that he was averaging around 10 points per game. So he dropped off and Montrose Hell dropped off from the offensive side of the ball as well. Um, but for whatever reason, Doc Rivers kept playing him in that, in playing him in fourth quarters. 
when the guy was off <laughs> and also given the fact that uh lou williams is a defensive liability that's the trade-off when you have you have lou williams when he's in games you put him in a game you know that you're gonna you're gonna tra you're trading pr pretty much offense for defense and i don't know why doc rivers kept going to him another thing i didn't understand was when you saw montrez harrell in zubak just getting abused by nikola Jokic, because it's not just about being tall and that's not the only thing that makes you a good a great defensive player there are a lot of great defensive bigs that are tall i mean there are a lot of tall uh, centers that are not great on defense right but this guy was not skilled enough defensively to deal with with uh um uh, um nikola Jokic, right but they went out there and got Joakim Noah that was just sitting there on the bench. Why did you pick him up if you weren't even willing to, you know, throw him out there and give him a look? No, no, no real adjustment. That you can't hold on the player. Um, game to game adjustments. Paul George lamented the fact that they just kept on doing the same thing every single game and they were kept on and they kept on losing. No adjustments. If you look at Tyron Lue, he he will call a timeout quickly and 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 quickly uh, clean uh, clean things uh, clean clean things up. So. The Clippers decided that they needed to part way with Doc Rivers, and he had been there for quite some time, I think over four or five years uh, prior. And um, the team never really got anywhere. The season prior, they had some they had some playoff success, but it was just a bunch of guys, really. They, they had no stars, just a bunch of role players that did pretty well. So they went, they went out there and got a new coach. And funny enough, a lot of fans were complaining last season that they didn't trust Doc Rivers, and it turned out they were right. So they went and got a, a, a new head coach, or really they promoted Tyron Lue to the head coaching um, position. And Tyron Lue, um, I, it, it was a coaching decision that I was very excited about because he was one of the most coveted coaches out there. Um, but when the Clippers were able to sign him, I thought they were heading in the right direction. And when Steve Ballmer commented on the team uh, promoting Tyron Lue to the head coach because he was there as an assistant coach, he said, we believe we have the best coach in the NBA. And Lawrence Frank said the same thing. Now, obviously, when you're making these type of decisions, you want to feel like you're making the right decision and making the best decision for your for your organization, especially also from a business standpoint, because a coach is going to a coach is going to be a, a major part of your uh, team success as you've seen in the past. So they went out there and decided to, to to promote this guy. And the minute that they brought him in, you understood a few things about Tyron Lue. Number one, he had experience from playing under Phil Jackson. Right. He he was part of that system, uh, the triangle offense there with Phil, but he also was able to study Phil's um coaching philosophy that's one thing which is invaluable then another thing was that he also was a championship coach and he coached one of the biggest stars in the history of the nba in lebron james a top 10 player all time he coached him right so he's been he's shown that he can deal with uh difficult personalities and don't forget kyrie irving was on that team as well so they brought in a guy that had championship experience but also a guy that's coached uh you know um premium talent in the nba this is the guy that they brought in and immediately you could see some of the you can see some of the improvements first thing that they decided to do was uh, uh, implement a new um offensive philosophy which was predicated which is predicated on playmaking and player movement and ball movement right they decided to run different sets of the triangle because the triangle is also predicated on ball movement but also um, it, it allows you to operate out of a set, but it's usually um, um, a, a format that you can now go to different options depending on what the defense is doing. But also you need great post players, preferably wing post players like a Kobe Bryant, like a Michael Jordan, uh, like a Kawhi Leonard. These guys who are very efficient in the post. If you go and look at a Kawhi Leonard play from the post, if you look at his footwork, it's, 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 it's impeccable. He probably has the best footwork of any um wing player in the nba that, that plays in the post if you just go and look at his footwork right um he, he he's top of the shelf and he he learned his footwork from the best um uh player probably that had uh from the player that had probably some of the best footwork in the history of the nba in kobe bryant who got a lot of his moves from michael jordan but also hakeem the dream halajuan so it's predicated on that as well you can see Kawhi leonard is having a career high in assists um, the team is pretty much shooting in this, at this current at this at the current pace that they're on. They're on a historic pace uh, for three pointers. Um, if they keep if they keep shooting at this clip, they're probably going to be the best three point three point shooting uh, team in the history of the NBA. Finally, you're seeing Kawhi Leonard play back to back. Some people said, "Listen, uh, Kawhi is playing back to backs because he's healthy." I don't believe so. Um, I've seen Kawhi Leonard play back to backs in the playoffs. Um, how do you explain that, right? You see him take nights off in the regular season and go into the playoffs and play back to backs, but there was no injury report in the regular season. It was like, okay, it wasn't like this guy was injured. So how come in the playoffs he's playing all these games and then in the regular season he's not? 
right? And now he's playing games all of a sudden. They haven't, there hasn't been any reports coming out that Kawhi Leonard was dealing with any kind of issues. The only game, reason he missed the game this season was because of the cut that he had on his lip from his teammates, uh, the elbow that he, he that he caught on his chin from his teammate Serge Ibaka. Kawhi Leonard is playing back to back. If you feel that Tyron Lue has no um, role to play in that, then I, I then I, I completely disagree with you. You see teammates becoming more supportive of each other. That is deliberate. These things just don't happen, right? The coach plays a major role in that. Phil Jackson is 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 it's very famous for making his guys bond off the court. He'll get them books to read. He'll make sure guys go to the movies. He'll make them meditate and do different yoga sessions. I mean, these things are deliberate. At that level, things are not left to chance. It's not like the coach knows that the team needs to be more supportive of each other and kind of lets it happen on its own. No, the coaches the coaches are very deliberate about that. And Tyron Lue is a smart guy. He's again. He played under Phil Jackson, who's the greatest coach of all time. So there's no way you're going to tell me that all of a sudden Kawhi Leonard and these guys got some type of epiphany on their own. If they, Why didn't they have this epiphany all, all these years? Why is it now all of a sudden, right? Don't discredit the coach. The coaching, coaching goes a long way. That's the reason why you see certain coaches in the NBA are coveted and others are not, right? If it was just the players, uh, it would be a different ballgame. But coaches matter like they do, uh, contrary to what some people think. Coaching matters. Um, there's a reason that you see the Clip the Lakers are so good on defense. You need a defensive minded coach. This doesn't happen on its own. Uh, so coaching plays plays a role. You see guys are being become becoming much more supportive of their of their team of their teammates, and you're seeing that's translating on the court. Guys have better chemistry. Guys where know each other. They know where um, their teammates are supposed to be on offense. You rarely see a lot of turnovers from the Clippers. The only time you see turnovers is usually in the pick and roll. And it's usually because of either Luke Kennard or Lou Williams. And I've I've said my piece on Lou Williams uh, this season. I just, I don't trust him as a decision maker. But thus far, I think it's very clear to see that hiring Ty Lu was one of the best decisions this organization made. And you can see it's starting to pay off now. So what I want to know from you guys is, do you think it was a smart decision for the Clippers to, to do this? Or... Do you think it doesn't really matter? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Again, if you enjoy the video, be sure to make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the next video on the channel. I'm sure you, you guys will enjoy that as well. Once again, this is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys an amazing day. Catch you guys on the next episode. Peace.